Well, good morning to every fans and addicts. If you are just joining us, welcome to day three of the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. My name is Mike Chex, and I am joined alongside me by... How do you? How would you like to be preferred? Would you prefer MCOM, miscommunication? What would you prefer? Just not Miz. That's what it's about, Mike Checks. Just not Miz. My name is Miscommunication. I hail from uh, California, where I call for the Ventura County Derby Darlings, hosts of the uh, Battle for the Bank, every, or not Battle for the Bank, Battle for the Coast every year. And you can call me Mizcom, you can call me MCOM, you can call me Ms. C, you can call me C. Just don't call me Ms. because I can't give you a hall pass, Mike Checks. No problem. I will probably be referring to you as MCOM as the bout goes on. Well, fans, we have an amazing bout lined up for you coming up. That featuring Jet City taking on Sacred City. It's going to be an amazing bout. This bout is for seventh place. The bout that you just witnessed, if you were around already this morning, you got to see Tucson taking on Angel City in the ninth place bout. That's right, ninth place belongs to the Angel City Derby Girls, 212 to 139. So what we're seeing here today, we've got Jet City versus Sacred City, and um, they are two great teams <laughs> who are matched up, and I have a hovering Kool-Aid here, I'm gonna hand it over. The score is not 139 to 212. The scoreboard has not yet been reset by the scoreboard operators, but that will be done shortly. I thought he was going to give us a disclaimer for a second there, Mike Checks. So did I. I thought, uh, I thought we may be witnessing something that we hadn't yet come accustomed to this weekend. Well, folks, if you are watching out there on WFTDA.com on the free feed and you have yet to plunk down your $20 right now. Right now is the perfect opportunity to throw down $20 and get in on that high definition feed. We are staring at it right now at the desk that we are announcing from and it is absolutely amazing and you are going to want that for the rest of the bouts that we have coming up today. Not only this bout, but the bout for fifth place, the bout for third place and the eventual championship bout which will go on later this afternoon. And maybe you're asking yourself, why would I put down $20 on the last day of a tournament? You also get access to the tournament archives. So you can go back and revisit all of those moments like that amazing game last night between Rose City and Oli. Holy cow, I need to be in more shape. That bout last night almost gave me a heart attack. Folks, we are about to get this one underway right now. On your screen, you will see Jet City in their white uniforms with blue trim and Sacred City in what I am calling their maroon uniforms with pink trim. Pink trim. Huh? Well, we're, we're, we're waiting to get started here. Apparently the uh, scoreboard needed to reset. So we're going to have just a little bit of a game delay while we're waiting for that to get figured out. Well, and folks, what that will allow us the opportunity to do is give some thanks to our tournament partners. That would be Spenlin Media, Union Vacations, and Rockstar Energy Drink. All proud tournament partners of the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. It's been a great weekend here in Portland. Everybody getting amped and excited to see who's going to be in Denver championships this year being hosted by the Denver Roller Dolls at the fabulous First Bank Center in Broomfield, Colorado, just outside of Denver. Indeed. And fans here in Portland, uh, if you haven't yet joined us this weekend, the team benches are set directly across from the pivot and the jam line. The penalty box is set between the two team benches. So when we refer to the front straightaway, that will be the straightaway with the pivot line and the jam line on it. And the second straightaway or the far straightaway will be the straightaway on the other side of the track opposite the team benches. Looks like they are still working on that scoreboard. The teams do have all eight blockers out on the track, both teams fielding their jammer. This is the first jam of the game that we are getting ready for, so nobody in the penalty box. We've got number 44 lined up on the jam line for Jet City. That is precious and metal, and she will be jamming against number 209, Jammin' Jewels for the Sacred City Derby Girls. I spent a lot of time hanging out with the Sacred City Girls this weekend. They are so excited to be here this weekend in Portland. And, uh, and excited just to prove themselves on the track and, and have the opportunity to play against uh, teams from their region that they don't normally get a chance to play with. Mike Checks, it looks like we're getting some thumbs up here and the jam is about ready to begin. 
That first whistle sends the blockers, albeit slowly, to start this first jam. Apparently it's a Sunday morning stroll in the pack here this morning. That second set of whistles gonna send the jammers. Sacred City taking that knee to release the jammers. Jam and Jewels fighting her way up to the top of the pack, looking for that hole. Precious and Metal pops out front. She's rolling into turn four with one blocker to beat. Sacred City cycling up, but Precious and Metal picking up lead jammer status coming out of turn four. Jam and Jewels looking for the reset. Gets hit though by number 34. Morticia Militia knocked to the outside. Fights her way up to the top of the pack. Free and clear, ready to score points with Precious and Metal breaking out of the pack. Picking up her four points and calling off the jam. Four point pass for Precious and Metal to open the game for, for Jet City, four nothing. That's right, don't pass by the folks at Dr. Hauschka. They're celebrating the fresh faces of the WFTDA. Check them out online and get your fresh face. Snack size number 21 lining up on the Pabst Blue Ribbon Jam line for Jet City. That's Colt 45, number 45 on the line for the ladies in red. Jet City starting with four blockers on the track. Sacred City only three. That's the uh, misbehave number 425 currently in the penalty box for Sacred City. Jammers released Colt 45 up in a, in a battle at the bottom of the pack against Teeny Bopper. You can see Snack Size pushing out front out of turn two. She comes along the second straightaway and she is your lead jammer. Jet City sending number 62, Marilyn Gunho, to the penalty box for a one minute sit as Colt 45 breaks free from the pack. Snack Size already attacking the back of the pack on her scoring pass, getting pushed outside the front straightaway. She calls off the jam after picking up three points for Jet City. That's right, Slapjack backing it up. She decides, ah, I won't do it, and just calls off the jam. You need to revolutionize your game. The folks at Green Monster Roller Sports, they, uh, Purveyors of antique boots, reckless wheels, and moto bearings. They're revolutionizing roller derby so that you can as well. Number 44, four closer wearing the star for Sacred City. Number five, Ivana Hertzia with the jammer cap for Jet City. Score right now seven to nothing with Jet City in the lead and breaking out of the front of the pack, Ivana Hertzia, lead jammer. Four clothes are free of the pack for Sacred City. Both jammers eligible to score. Pack lightning up, two blockers out there for each team as Ivana Hercha makes her way through the pack. She calls off the jam after picking up four points for Jet City. Jet City sending Morticia Militia, I believe for a two minute sit in the penalty box, a major elbow penalty being called. If you are unique, sexy, and comfortable, the folks at Sock Dreams want you to have unique, sexy, comfy socks. So for the roller girl and everyone, Sock Dreams. Number 2010, Judy Jettison taking to the jam line for Sacred City. She's opposed by Sierra Fist for Jet City. Pack advantage right now belonging to Sacred City. Three ladies in red against two in white. Slow start to the pack, 15 seconds off the jam clock, and the jammers have yet to be set free. Looks like they were waiting for 62 Maryland Gunho to go ahead and rejoin them in the pack before allowing those jammers to be released. Jet City setting up a three wall in the back of the pack. Nasty Nikki Nightstick helping knock out Judy Jettison. And it's Sierra Fist through the pack first. However, she is not your lead jammer. Minor track cut. Judy Jettison fighting her way up to the top of the pack. Marilyn Gunho in her way. Sierra Fist making quick work of the track all the way ready, engaging the pack again in the front straightaway. Judy Jettison clears the pack in turn one, calls off the jam, but not before Sierra Fist picks up two points for Jet City. Jam and Jewels up against a Precious and Metal. If 
you're feeling up against a wall, folks at Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA, would like to help you fix that. Fix up your skates with some Adam Wheels today. Mike Checks. We have Jet City with a 13 to nothing lead on Sacred City with just over five minutes gone here in the first half of play. Precious and Metal attacking the pack, starting up going to the outside, dancing back to the inside. Both jammers caught at the back of the pack, coming around turn two. Jam and Jules still looking for a hole, but she gets caught up with that three wall up at the top of the pack. Jam and Jules thought she found some light on the inside of the pack, dances to the outside, still trying to find an answer for that two wall of Jet City blockers at the front of the pack. Trixie's, Trixie's trashing him though, not letting her by, knocking her to the outfield. She works up to the top of the pack, and on the out of play call, a lead jammer, Jam and Jules. Precious and metal now clear of the pack for Jet City. Jam and Jules though again making quick work of the track for Sacred City already attacking the back of the pack. Trix Trixie's trashing him, knocking her to the inside. Refs throw their fist in the air for Ref Solidarity. No score in that jam. That's right, Ref Solid. It's looking like Sacred City, uh, Jet City constantly uh, building these walls and containing Sacred City. You know, they've, they've had Lee Jammer now three or twice in a row, not putting up any points on the board though. Jet City sending number 52, Unshine, to the jam line. She's going to be taking on number 45, Colt 45, for Sacred City. Colt 45 shoots up to the top of the pack with that three wall built by Jet City. Looking to be impervious for her. She comes up against number 12, a nasty Nikki Nightstick. Has to let her go. A lead jammer, Sacred City. Well, you can see on the left side of your screen there, Jet City's jammer, Unshine, trying to attack the pack. She rolls forward, coming up against a three wall of... Sacred City blockers at the front of the pack. Cold 45 getting knocked to the outside around turn two. Jet City just brutalizing these Sacred City jammers. Unshine trying to gain her footing. She clears the pack on turn four. Out of play minor being called on number 22, Slapjack. Cole 45 seeing Unshine catching up with her. Hits the pack, calls off the jam, gets two points for Sacred City. Puts Sacred City on the board at 13 to two right now with the ladies in white up ahead. Rydell Skates is a proud partner in the official skate of the WFTDA. Tell me who's walking up to that Pabst Blue Ribbon Jam line. We've got number 44, four closer jamming for Sacred City against number five, Ivana Hurtcha for Jet City. Four closer rolling to the outside of the front straightaway, almost clears it. She does, in fact. No, change in call. We've got a track cut penalty, and she is going to the penalty box. She cut the last line of defense. Ivana Hurtcha, not your lead jammer. Either Albino Wookie signaling to her she is not the lead jammer. So Ivana Hurtcha, the only jammer of record out on the track. She makes quick work on the inside rail of the front straightaway for a grand slam, Jet City. Jet City just clearing the path for her, hurting all those Sacred City members to the outside of the track. Ivana Hurtcha comes in, engages the pack. She gets hit to the infield, tries to avoid the cutting the track, but she gets that cutting the track major, and we're gonna swap them out in the penalty box. Excellent hit by Axel Breaker, knocking her to the inside of turn three, just with enough force that she rolled through and cut a number of skaters. Four closer back in, she darts to the pack, comes around turn four. Sacred City slowing it down and backing it up. She, she gets knocked a little bit out of balance, but through a grand slam as Sacred City. An amazing display of footwork there, keeping herself in bounds as she came around on the outside of the far straightaway. This time she darts around to the inside of the front straightaway for another grand slam for Sacred City. Sacred City just making a wall and backing up that pack, virtually stalled there right, right in the middle of your screen. What I appreciate about Floor Closer is her first scoring pass. She went to the outside, her second one to the inside. This time she tried going through the middle. Well, you know, sometimes you need variety in your life, Mike Checks. Indeed. 
Meanwhile, Ivana Hercha out of the penalty box for a five-point grand slam for Jet City. Folks, the action on the track right now is fast and furious. Coming around turn one right now with the pack. Ivana Hercha looking to dart to the outside. She tries to go through the middle. Jam ends three to two in that pass. Four closer favoring her right leg a little bit as she gets up slowly at the end of that jam, returns to the bench area. Sacred City able to close that up a little bit. 15 to 25 right now with 19 minutes remaining in the period. You know, Mike Checks, I might, I might venture a guess that Sacred City picked up a little bit from Mile High Club yesterday. It appears as though both of these teams have been watching all of the other teams that have been skating here playing all weekend long, studying their gameplay. It has been interesting to see the different tactics being employed by these teams that uh, weren't necessarily being employed earlier on in the weekend. This is another reason that events like this are absolutely great for all of the teams involved. If you're looking to study more about roller derby, the folks at Blood and Thunder Magazine provide worldwide roller derby coverage for you. Get yourself a subscription now. We've got an official timeout being called. Well, at MCOM, what that's going to allow us to do real quick is thank a couple more of our tournament partners. They include Skate Court, Jules Doyle Photography, ProTech Dent Mouth Guards, and Derby Skins, all of them proud sponsors of the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. You know, it's really been an excellent weekend here. You know, Mike Checks, uh, I, I appreciate the hospitality that Rose City always provides uh, for tournament play here. This is my second tournament here in Portland. First one, I was just a, a wee lass on the mic watching some roller derby and trying to learn about it more. And now I know about it, and I'm here again. Well, we are happy to have you. It has been an amazing event this weekend, and we are thankful for the WFTDA and all of their help. What we learned that official timeout was for was Jet City was questioning the no call where Sacred City's jammer came around. This was her first scoring pass in that last jam where she came around on the outside, skated low, spun around. Her skate knocked the skate of the outside most blocker on that pass. There was no call on that contact, and we are told that the referee crew uh, is standing by that non-call. On that jammer line right now, number 21 for the ladies in white, snack size. She will be skating against Judy Jettison for the ladies in red. All of the blockers make it past the pivot line. That frees the jammers. Snack size darting to the inside to start. Judy Jettison rolling to the outside and joining her wall of blockers there. Snack size finding that inside path breaks free. Elite jammer, Jet City. Judy Jettison, though, not far behind her. She's just got a, she's just got one or two more uh, blockers from Jet City in front of her. They have to let her go. That was Marilyn Gunho and Nasty Nikki Nightstick out front providing the defense for Jet City. Snack size content to take two points as she gets knocked outside of turn one and call it a jam. Jet City 27, Sacred City 15. You know, sometimes you're just content to go fast. Fast Girl Skates, the industry pioneer in boot sizing and configuration for a women's feet. 209, Jam and Jules returning to the jam line for the Sacred City Derby Girls. She's put up against number 44, Precious and Metal for Jet City. Four to three pack advantage, Sacred City to start this jam. Precious and Metal out. Uh, barreling her way through that pack. She clears going into turn two, and she is your lead jammer. That's right, Jam and Jewels getting knocked to the outfield by number six, Beelzebabe. Has to restart at the back of the pack. Jet City cycles their three blockers up to the front of the pack. They are trying to hold back Jam and Jewels, who makes her way through on the outside rail. She is clear on her initial pass. Looks like Precious and Metal being sent to the penalty box. And the crowd is getting loud here as we've got Jet City sitting at 27, Sacred City 15, and Sacred City in a power jam situation. 
will of course be going for the remaining minute of this jam. Looking to see what, what Jam and Jules will do with it. She puts up a five point grand slam for Sacred City. Makes her way around Bielsel Babe, who was the last line of defense for Jet City, and she makes it through the pack again, absorbing a hit in turn four for her grand slam, Sacred City. Sacred City stopping the pack in between turns four, three and four here. Jam and Jewels coming up against that wall at the back of the pack, Wall of White. The Wall of White then quickly recycles to the front of the pack giving her another wall. She tries to call off the jam, getting a minor illegal procedure on that one. She right? is not the lead jammer of record, as you mentioned earlier, MCOM. That's why we're going the full two minutes in this jam. Sacred City entered this scoring pass down, only two points to Jet City. Jam and Jules looking to pick up that remaining two points, a number 16 slingshot coming in to clear the path. Speaking of coming in, Precious and Metal sneaking back into the pack in turn four, undetected four point pass for Precious and Metal. Gemma Jewel's still looking to pick up a few more points. She does pick up a three as the jam is called. Fans, we've got ourselves a heck of a bout here. Jet City 31, Sacred City 28 as we are 15 minutes into this bout. We got a heck of a bout and a heck of a donut to the folks at Voodoo Donuts, one of our sponsors. Remember, the magic is in the hole. MCOM, has anybody asked you to bring back Voodoo Donuts to them in California? You know, I'm sure that there are plenty of people that would like me to bring back Voodoo Donuts. Whether or not I do it will depend on the adoration on my Facebook wall after this bout. <laughs> You heard it here first, California fans. If you would like to get yourself a Voodoo Donut, you better be nice to MCOM's Facebook wall. On the track, we've got ourselves an official timeout. Sierra Fist wearing the star for Jet City for this next jam. Number 45, Colt 45, going to be jamming for Sacred City. And speaking of friends, a few more friends of our tournament, 5-on-5 five five Magazine, New Belgian Brewery, makers of Fat Tire Amber Ale, Wicked Skatewear, and Sin City Skates. Well, fans, in the center of your screen there, in the center of the track, you will see that whiteboard, and you will see a bunch of folks standing around in pink shirts, and then, of course, all of our referees on their skates. Obviously, our skating and our non-skating officials who have put in an amazing weekend worth of work there. You can see the penalty board right there. You can see white, which obviously is for Jet City. That board tracks the minor and major penalties. So you've got three columns right there. You've got the number of the skater. The center column there is how many minor penalties they've got. And then the letters on the right-hand side, those are the major penalties that they've accrued. So when a skater picks up four minor penalties, that will be erased. They will be assessed a major penalty uh, it, it goes over to the major side of the board they'll indicate that by the number four usually indicating that they picked up four minors for their trip to the box oh, it sounds like we had a skater from each squad that picked up their fourth minor and the paperwork on that they were checking that whiteboard that I was telling you about earlier, making sure that the miners had been assessed correctly and the people were in the box that needed to be. Jet City taking a knee to create that no-pack situation immediately. Sierra Fist breaking out in front, but Sacred City seeming to take that wall up front while Jet City remains in the back. Sierra Fist out, but not lead jammer. She had a minor back blocking penalty. Sacred City working on trying to get their jammer through the pack. Two wall up front. Nasty Nikki Nightstick holding back Colt 45 as she attacks the pack. Still on her initial pass. Sierra Fist breaking through. Zooming, booming. Uh, five points. Grand slam to coin a phrase. Colt 45 breaking through the pack. She did so legally, was declared lead jammer and called off the jam, but not before. Jet City pushed their point total to 36 to Sacred City's 28. That's right, 15 minutes remaining in the half. Dr. Hauschka is the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose that bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid. MCOM, it looks like we've got Ivana Hercha wearing the Jammer Star at the Paps Blue Ribbon Jam Line for Jet City and for closer, number 44, jamming for Sacred City. Jet City uh, doing a... The They've been building this uh, back wall on, on the jammer line um, for basically the whole tournament. It's worked out pretty effectively for them. 
Foreclosure being held back by that wall of white. They round the turn on turn two. Ivana Hertzia almost neck and neck, but she's being held back long enough for Foreclosure to become grand, or to become <laughs> lead jammer. Trixie's trashing them being sent to the penalty box for Jet City. Number 44, Foreclosure. She is your lead jammer coming through turn four, now into turn one, getting ready to attack the back of the pack. And there wasn't much attacking needing to be done. She skates through that pack nearly untouched for a grand slam for Sacred City, bringing them to within three of Jet City. Ivana Hertzia looking to take a break on the outside, but a slingshot getting in her way and knocking her to the outfield as that foreclosure through again, it's closed. Five point grand slam for Sacred City and that folks is your lead change. Slapjack with some amazing hits out there on Jet City's jammer. And it's foreclosure through the pack for another grand slam. And we've got a major track cut on Ivana Hurt just sending her to the penalty box. Power jam, Sacred City. Foreclosure cruising on that outside rail, gets knocked out of bounds, forced to call off the jam or back up a long, long way, but picks up another four points. Smart play by Foreclosure there. Knocked to the outside of turn three. Her momentum carried her forward almost into turn four. Saw that the blocker that knocked her out skated backwards, and she decided, you know what? I've got my points. We're in a power jam situation. I'm going to call it off, and we're going to reset. Smart play there by Foreclosure. That's a, a powerful way to play your power jam. Elemental technologies are the world's most powerful video processing solutions. On the jam line, we've got number 209, Jammin' Jules. She will be the only jammer starting on that jam line, this jam. Sacred City finding themselves in an, with an excellent opportunity to seize and capitalize on momentum. That's right, 11 point lead right now here in the first half. Looks like Jet City has called a team timeout. Folks at Durbalife provide customized nutrition systems and coaching. Put a little more life in your game. You can find them online and also, you know, if you're at home uh, listening to the game before you come into the tournament, they do have a table here in our vendor area. Indeed they do. We've got some amazing vendors set up on the concourse. So if you are able to make it down here to the Memorial Coliseum to catch this action live later this afternoon, be sure you check out some of our proud sponsors. One of those sponsors, Rydell Skates, proud partner in the official skate of the WFTDA. That's Rydell Skates. Well, them comment appears as though this turn, this uh, team timeout has turned into an official timeout. Correct, and I'm sure we will figure out what the what is happening here shortly. I know uh, both of these teams playing relatively fast and then slowing it down immediately. It's 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 probably one of my favorite things to watch in roller derby. Where they're just going full tilt, and then all of a sudden the pack just stops. Well, that's one of those things where a strategy like that designed to pick up back block penalties and both teams very adept at doing that. Okay, apparently Trixie's Trashnum was mistakenly given a penalty. They have resolved the situation, absolved her of that penalty for Jet City. That apparently was not a team timeout, but an official timeout. Nothing like a little absolution on a Sunday, Mike Checks. Indeed. So we are going to reset the action, and what we have here is we have a 4-2 to two pack advantage in favor of Sacred City. They also have another very important advantage. They're starting this jam in a power jam, number 209. Jam and Jewels, the only jammer of record on the track. Jet City building that wall of three up at the top of the pack. Jam and Jewels trying to look for a way either around or through. Nasty Nikki Nightstick trying to bridge the pack for Jet City, but Jam and Jewels making it through, picking up lead jammer status for Sacred City. Jam and Jules making short work of the track. Make sure she slows up before hitting that back wall of Jet City blockers. She makes it through on 
her own five point grand slam for Jam and Jules. Sacred City slowing down and backing up the pack, hoping to get a little closer to their jammer. Jam and Jules getting knocked to the infield. Biesel Babe rejoins the action for Jet City. Ivana Hercha, though, coming in from the penalty box. This power jam is about to end. Five point grand slam for Jam and Jules. Sacred City pushing their total to 57 to Jet City's 36. Ivana Hercha making her way through the pack, not Lee Jammer, of course. Got she Jam and Jules up at the top of the pack. Decides to call it off, picking up an additional two points. Sacred City cashing in on the momentum swing right now. They now lead Jet City by a score of 59 to 36 as we've got just under 12 minutes left to play in the first half of action, MCOM. That's all right, have you been smacked by rollergirlskates.com yet? Well, you need to be. Trigger Mortis is in the house here. Colt 45 on the Pabst Blue Ribbon Jam line for Sacred City. Precious and metal with the jammer cap for Jet City. Both jammers kind of getting uh, trapped at the back of the pack. And out in front, Colt 45, lead jammer. Precious and Metal with a forearm penalty. Looks like a fourth minor penalty. She is headed to the penalty box for Jet City. Again, another power jam situation for Colt 45 in Sacred City. You know, Jet City can't afford to give up many more of these power jam situations, Mike checks. At the top of the pack, we've got a wall built by those ladies in white. Colt 45 gets knocked to the outfield, calls it off, picking up three points. And again, smart jamming on behalf of Sacred City, understanding what they were up against and understanding the opportunity that they had. They have a power jam. No need to waste time trying to get points when they can reset. Have a new jammer out there, and that new jammer going to be number 44 for closer for Sacred City. Sacred City doing a little three and back, one in front, taking the knee, making that no-pack situation, and Forecloser is off and ready to engage that four wall at the top of the pack. Number 16 slingshot playing offense for her jammer at the front of the pack, and it works well as Forecloser through the pack quickly, picking up lead jammer status. It's a power jam, and she is in control. Jet City is scurrying to build their three wall in the middle of the pack. Swarming play by the Sacred City blockers, though, open up a huge hole for four closer to roll through. She puts five more points on the board for Sacred City. Jet City sending Marilyn Gunho to the penalty box. Four closer fights her way through the middle of the wall, wins the fight. Five point grand slam. Precious and Metal rejoining the action on the track. Finds a hole on the outside of the front straightaway, and she is through on her initial pass. Forecloser calls it off. And it looks like Sacred City's got Jet City doubled up 72 to 36. That's right. Those, those two power jam, or those three power jams virtually in a row, really helping Sacred City to double their score. Judy Jettison stepping to the line in red up against Ivana Hercha, number five in white. Both teams starting with three blockers on the track. Precious and Metal out there trying to force some action forward for Jet City. Pack finally strolls over that line. Sacred City, though, uh, coming to an almost stop just past that pivot line, trapping Ivana Hercha. Judy Jettison fighting against that Jet City four wall at the front of the pack. Pack being bridged by number 22, Slapjack. Judy Jettison makes it through the pack first. However, she picked up a minor track cut along the way. She is not your lead jammer. Ivana Hercha being forced to the outside by number 15, Cash Money. She is not your lead jammer either. This jam will have no lead jammer. We are going two minutes, MCOM. That's right. She's not going to be lead jammer. Uh, number 15, Cash Money, knocking her to the outfield, but also taking a fall. That was a no pass, no penalty on the outside checks. Cash money all over this track as a blocker doing a great job. Judy Jennison knocked to the inside of turn four. Both jammers fighting their way through the pack on their first scoring pass. 
And we've got four points being picked up by Ivana Hercha for Jet City. Judy Denson still fighting her way at the top of the pack on her first scoring pass. Ivana Hercha, though, rounding the corner and ready to re-engage the pack. Sia wouldn't want to be a clearing away for her, getting some of those Sacred City blockers out of the way, and that's four points. Meanwhile, Judy Jennison being sent to the penalty box, cut the last line of defense for Jet City. She's going to go cool her wheels for a minute, and this is an opportunity for Jet City to take back momentum. However... Ivana Hercha heading to the penalty box, major back blocking penalty. So we'll just swap those jammers out real quick. And that jam reaches its two minute conclusion. What that means is that Judy Jennison will go ahead and start this jam from the penalty box. MCOM, that was an amazingly crazy jam by both teams there. The end result right now, at least according to the scoreboard, Sacred City 76, Jet City 45. And on the far straightaway, it seems as though we have the cheering sections for both Sacred City and Jet City, and they are making their voices heard this morning. That is correct. It's pretty noisy in here, folks. Jam has already started. Judy Jennison out of the penalty box for Sacred City. She strolls past her uh, players in red up to that wall at the top of the pack. Jet City rolling three blockers wide, rolling into turn three. Marilyn Gung Ho almost getting picked off, but rejoins her blockers. Havana hurt you out of the penalty box for Jet City. Judy Jennison still held up by that three wall up at the top of the pack. Marilyn Gung Ho. Nasty Nikki. Nasty Nike six, sorry, uh, holding it up for their team, uh, trying to keep her in her place. Teeny Bopper also a part of that three wall that has been very solid all jam long for Jet City. Judy Jettison having a hard time finding her way against that. Say nothing of the defense at the back of the pack by Sacred City holding back Ivana Hercha. That's right, ladies in red sending number 23, Axel Breaker for a one minute sit. And on the out of play, Ivana Hercha free, ready to score points. But Mike Checks took over a minute for either jammer to break that pack. Indeed, and she, not, she is not the lead jammer picking up a minor track cut. Judy Jettison is your lead jammer, finally breaks the pack and calls the jam off. No points scored by either team. That was an absolutely insane jam there, MCOM. Well, whenever you have a jammer starting from the penalty box, things always get interesting. Indeed. Well, folks, FlatTrackRevolution.com is another proud sponsor of our tournament action. That is Flat Track Revolution, where your passion. Jam and Jewel step into the line in the red. She's up against Precious in Metal, number 44 for Jet City in white. Jet City starting out with a 4-2 to two blocker advantage. Jam and Jewel's coming up against that four wall. You can see all of the blockers bottled up in the middle of the pack. Precious and Metal using that pack advantage to her favor. Lead jammer. She's out and running. Trixie's trashing him, shrugging off a huge hit, but then absorbing one from Slapjack coming out of turn four. Precious and Metal darting through the pack. She's got a five-point grand slam. Jam and Jewels is still having issues getting her way through the pack on her initial pass. And on the out of play, she's let free, ready to score points. Trixie's trashing him, and Beelzebub did a great job holding her back for nearly a minute there. Jet City fans showing their approvals. Another four points slotted on Jet City's side of the scoreboard. Sacred City 76, Jet City 54, as we are under four minutes left to play in this first half. Colt 45 on the line for Sacred City. She's up against number 21, a snack size for Jet City. Jet City rolling four blockers to the pivot line. Sacred City with their three blockers about two or three strides behind them. Jet City stringing out the pack. Coming around turn two. Looks like Colt 45 has to avoid that cutting the track penalty, and she does not do it successfully. Major track cut since Colt 45 to the penalty box. Power jam at Jet City Bombers. Snack size makes it through the pack. However, she is not your lead jammer. No pass, no penalty. 
Again, MCOM, we're going to find ourselves here with a two-minute jam. Correct. Jet City making a line on the pack. Looking, I guess, for a, for a line of attack. They come around the turn. Snack Size coming up against that wall of red, but the wall of red skates too far out. They have to let her go. Fourth that minor accrued by Slingshot. Sorry to cut you off there. She's going to go cool her wheels for a minute, giving Jet City a four to three pack advantage. And make that a four to two pack advantage as Xerox being sent to the penalty box for Sacred City as well. That's right, pack advantage right now, four to two. As Snack Size darting to the outside, easily avoiding that mini wall of Sacred City, five points. Wow, Colt 45 out of the penalty box like a shot. She has cleared her initial pass already and is trying to track down Snack Size. Remember, neither of these jammers are the lead jammer. Snack Size tries to call it off. She picks up an illegal procedure and the back block. She is being sent off the track. Now Colt 45 in a power jam situation, putting five points on the board for Sacred City. Colt 45 rounding around turn two. Sacred City again stopping the pack. Looks like, looks like she also picking up a penalty. Didn't quite catch that one. She's gonna head to the penalty box. As the jam is dead, we're gonna see Snack Size starting from the penalty box. I think it was Dump Truck this weekend that coined the phrase, the lazy Susan of the penalty box, the jammer seats right there. Holy cow. One jammer went in, one jammer came out. One jammer went in, one jammer came out. Holy cow. You know, I, it's, it's, it's hard as a penalty box timer to not go cross-eyed, keeping track of all of those jammer penalties and, and how to time when. Snack size out of the penalty box, that three wall built at the back of the pack by the ladies in red as Colt 45 also serving that same penalty time back in. But snack size, first out, lead jammer. Ivana Hercha picking up her fourth minor penalty. She's gonna go cooler wheels in the penalty box. Colt 45 out of the pack on her initial pass, now set to score as Beelzebabe comes around being sent to the penalty box for Jet City. That's right. And it looks like Snack Size being sent out for a, a minor, fourth minor, a, a low block, taking a bit of a fall in the pack and getting in the way with her feet. Five points up on the board for Colt 45 and the Sacrificers. Sacred City right now at 86, Jet City at 64. Pack is hitting hard right now. Four blockers out there for Sacred City, two for Jet. And right now that period clock has run out. We are going to go the remaining minute of this jam. Cole 45 putting another grand slam on the board for Sacred City. Trixie trashing him, knocking Colt 45 to the infield. She tries to call off the jam. She is not the lead jammer. Another minor illegal procedure assessed. Colt 45 finds a hole on the outside. She is through on the grand slam. Sacred City just using these remaining 30 seconds to punish Jet City. Huge hit on the line by Trixie's trashing them. Cash Money, the unfortunate recipient of that huge hit. Snack Size darts out of the penalty box and rejoins the action for Jet City. She does a little pirouette and a fall on the outfield. Has to come back and rejoin the pack behind. And the fans for both sides roaring their approval as the action here is insane. Four points to end that jam for Snack Size. Two more points being called in for Sacred City. I believe MCOM that leaves us with a score of 98 to 68 to wrap up this first half of play. Sacred City leads. That's right. We're seeing a real, real heavy, heavy hitting in both of these packs. Both teams obviously picking up those heavy hits from the other teams that they played this weekend, playing some pack strategy, and you've got a 30-point game. I'm calm. It looks like we have got our referees in place. We've got blockers by the pivot line, and we've got jammers behind the Path Blue Ribbon jam line. Those jammers, both number 44, that's precious and metal for Jet City in their white uniforms with blue trim, and 44 for closer for Sacred City in their maroon uniforms with pink trim. 
You laugh when I say that. Can a guy with a voice like mine not say pink this early in the morning? No, Come that's, on. that's what it is. It's your voice, and it's all rough, and you're like, with pink trim. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with pink. All of our... I would like uh, to do my room in pink trim. All, <laughs> all of our non-skating officials here decked out in their pink shirts. I can that's say right. the word pink. Come See, on. No, it's not the pink. It's the trim. Oh, pink trim. <laughs> yeah, it's the trim oh. combination with the pink that, that makes me laugh. 44 versus 44. No pack situation right now. Jammers released immediately, of course. Jet City sending four blockers to the front of the track. Precious and Metal finding a hole on the inside of turn two. She pops through and picks up lead jammer status for Jet City. We got a four-arm major being called on number 69. Trixie's trashing him for Jet City. Four clothes are getting knocked to the outfield by Beelzebub. Of course, she has to re-enter behind her to avoid that track cut. Precious and Metal, though, fighting her way up. Both jammers neck and neck, but one of them is scoring points right now. Four closer was playing a little bit of defense there against Precious and Metal. Four closer through the pack on her initial pass. Precious and Metal grand slam Jet City. They may be looking to snag that momentum to start this second half, MCOM. That's right, Jet City hoping to pick up the pace, close that gap between the two of them. Five Stride Skate Shop is the preferred shop of Bonnie Thunders, Derange, Psycho Babble, Susie Hodrod, and Teflon Donna. That is Five Stride Skate Shop. We've got number 45, Colt 45, taken to the jam line for Sacred City. She'll be skating against number 21, Snack Size for Jet City. Another no pack situation at call. Jammers released immediately. Jet City building that wall up at the top of the pack. Cole 45 trying to fight her way around it. Snap. But through the middle, snack size. Sneaking up on you. Cole 45 hot on her wheels though, giving up about three strides to snack size. Jet City with two of their blockers in the penalty box. Sacred City at full strength. Snack size re-engages the pack, gets knocked outside, calls off the jam before Colt 45 has a chance to draw any blood. Colt 45 lobbying for two points, but their jam refs fists in the air for solidarity. No score in that jam. Yes, uh, normally the jam ref is the one who determines how many points were scored on a pass and not the jam. Yeah, it is, it is interesting the rules are set up that way. I can't, I can't begin to imagine why. Well, and we've got an official timeout. Maybe they're going to discuss exactly why it is that the jammer doesn't get to call their own points. That might actually be the discussion. The perfect beer to have over a good dis under a good discussion is the Terminal Gravity at Pale Ale. You're going to want to try that now. It's a locally brewed beer here in Portland. So maybe perhaps you're listening to us from outside of Portland. When you come here, I highly recommend it as a Pale Ale. I love the Terminal Gravity's IPA. It is among my favorite IPAs. Uh, and you can get that not only here in Portland, but they do distribute that as well. It is Terminal Gravity's IPA. Got a little uh, worm action happening on the track there by Jet City's coach. He's moving and grooving. That would be Trey Trash over there doing the worm. Oh my gosh, and do we have Nasty Nicky Nightstick doing that as well? Uh, yes. You can see that on your screen right there. That was Nasty Nicky Nightstick with a little bit of breakdance action there in front of the Jet City bench. A little breakdance and a pose, because that is important, Mike Checks. When you are breakdancing, you have to pose when you are done. That's right, we are throwing down the gauntlet. Still in the throes of that official time out, folks. DerbySupply.net, providing the best customer service in the business, period. I know those guys. I have. And they are definitely committed to customer service and taking care of each of their customers in an individual fashion. Well, I know that Sacred is contesting points. I have learned that much so far. We're trying to uh, make sure that everybody that needs to know what is going on knows what's going on. Sacred was contesting the number of points there at the end of that jam. Maybe that was the uh, two points that Colt 45 was lobbying for. Correct. Uh, Colt 45 blazing it past the pack at the very end, right before the four whistles. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that the uh, officials are talking about whether or not she did hit those points before the end of the last whistle. And apparently the no score by Colt 45 stands. No points picked up by Colt 45. 
Score right now headed into this jam, 98 to 73, Sacred City on top. Ivana Hutch on the line for the ladies in white. She's up against Jam and Jewels. Jam and Jewels trying to push those two blockers. Precious and Metal Beals are out front. She gets around them on the outside, going into turn two, and she is your lead jammer. Ivana Hurt here coming up against three uh, Sacred City blockers at the front of the pack while Jam and Jewels attacks the inside of turn three. She barrels her way through for a grand slam for Jet City, and that pushes them, pushes them past the century mark. Ivana Hurt puts on the pressure, forcing that call off. Sacred City pushing their total, as I said, over the century mark to 103. Jet City at 73. But we still have plenty of time left in this bout, MCOM. Just 20, over 27 minutes left. We've got four closers stepping to the line for the ladies in red, up against Sierra Fist, number 86 for Jet City. Looks when like. Looks 2010, like Judy Jettison. She's standing behind the jam line, intentionally taking her fourth minor penalty. She will be sent to the penalty box for Sacred City. Interesting, as she is a jammer for her team. Indeed, one of the uh, one of the reasons that she does that is so she can clear her minors. We talked about that earlier that they track on that whiteboard in the center. She will now have no minor penalties when she comes back out to jam later, as I'm guessing she eventually will. That's correct. The uh, the pack released and the jammers not quite hearing that jam whistle just yet, having to get motioned by the Jet City Wall that it is your time to skate. Meanwhile, number 425 misbehaved being sent to the penalty box for Sacred City. Sierra Fist out in front, the jammer. For closer, fighting with that wall of white, nasty Nikki Nightstick, showing that she can break skate as well as break dance, my checks. Indeed, Marilyn Gunhart also up front, providing some defense for Jet City. However, for closer, makes her way through on her initial pass. Sierra Fist being a center. Sacred City now has control of the score. Four closer now to find herself in a power jam situation for Sacred City. Sacred City going to look to pile on the 30 point lead that they currently have. Fourth minor being assessed to number 16 slingshot. She's going to head to the penalty box for Sacred City. Pack advantage four to three for Jet City. Four closer. Fighting her way up to the top of the pack, but uh, Jet City Bombers bombing away from her, trying to speed up the pack and play keep away. Foreclosure does get out of the pack. It doesn't pick up a full five because of a uh, forearm minor. Four point pass there for Sacred City as number 425 misbehaved, found herself exiting the penalty box on that last pass. Sierra Fist standing in the penalty box for Jet City, getting ready to rejoin the action. The closer darting for a little inside beat through the pack. Sierra Fist rolling her way through undetected outside for a four point pass for Jet City. Fourth minor for four closer on a track cut. She is going to head to the penalty box for Sacred City. And MCOM, as we saw during the end of the first half, we see jammers go into the penalty box. We see jammers come out. They're on heavy rotation once again. Well, fans, if you haven't had the opportunity to check out Derba Life, you need to. They offer customized nutrition programs and coaching. Put more life in your game with Derba Life. Precious and, <laughs> Precious and Metal lined up as the only jammer for Jet City. Jet City blockers getting the jam started quickly. They're going to try and cash in on this power jam situation. Precious and Metal fighting her way through the pack as a Jet City setting a number 69. It tricks his trash him to the penalty box. Precious and Metal fighting against number, holy cow, against number 16 slingshot, number 22 slapjack, slapjack with a huge hit on Precious and Metal. I'd say that was a little sling slap. Holy cow. Fans showing their approval, chanting slapjack, slapjack. High block being assessed to number one, Neil and Weep. She's going to the penalty box. 
Pressures the metal, kind of running into her as she cuts, cuts across to the penalty box. She's still fighting her way. We've got this little skinny pack apparently taking our advice about that Durba life. She finally breaks free on the out of play, lead jammer. That took almost a minute, which of course means that foreclosure is back in the fray. Quickly out of the penalty box and closing in on Precious and Metal again. We've got both number 44s jamming for their respective teams. Two blockers out on the track for each crew and both jammers go down in turn two. Foreclosure slow to get up, but she does. Skates by the Sacred City fan base again, cheering her on. That's right, it's the power of the fans that makes you get up. Thank you so much, by the way, for tuning into our broadcast today. You, our fans, we love you as well. Indeed, in this action being brought to you by Merch Mama, supplying swag to the Derby Nation. That's Merch Mama. And lo and behold, we've got Jam and Jewels on the line for Sacred City number 209 and Unshine number 52 for the Jet City Bombers. Super Light Pack started this jam number 15. Cash Money rejoining the little bit of action that's going on on the track right now. Jet City uh, seeming to uh, do a little anything you can do, we can do better. We can kill time for our people in the penalty box as well. Neil and Weep standing in the penalty box for Sacred City. She rejoins the lack of action on the track. Teeny Bopper standing for Jet City. She now joins the skating going on on the track. And the jammers are finally off. Jammers finally off with Jet City building that wall in the back. Jamming Jules, they're darting on the outside. Apparently stepped out of bounds, has to come back in, and Unshine, it just got a little dimmer, lead jammer. Jam and Jules clear of the pack now on her initial pass. Unlike the start of this jam, Brockers now skating at full speed around this pack. Unshine catching up to the back of Sacred City's Brockers. She picks up one point, two points, excuse me, and that's one point picked up by Jam and Jules for Sacred City. One thing you're gonna to wanna to pick up is the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid, go ahead and lose the bruise with that ouch aid. Sacred City 113, Jet City 79. Just slightly more than 20 minutes left to play in this bout. Judy Jettison, number 2010, putting the star on for Sacred City. She's up against Ivana Hercha for the ladies in white, number five. Three wall of blockers in the back for Sacred City. Wall of blockers up front for Jet City. Judy Jettison just slowly skating behind that three wall as the Sacred City three wall passes the Jet City three wall. And that fight's still going on with Ivana Hercha. She goes ahead and steps in, takes that minor cut track just to get through. Not lead jammer, but ready to score and approaching the pack. Excellent hammer now being run by Axel Breaker there. Ivana Hercha being sent to the penalty box for Jet City. And Judy Jettison being sent for Sacred City. Ivana Hercha sits for about a second. Judy Jettison sits for about a second. And we've got both jammers back out on the track. What that means though is we're gonna go for the remaining minute of this marathon jam. Axel Brinker being sent to the penalty box for Sacred City. Ivana Hercha through the pack for Jet City on a way to five point grand slam. Judy Jennison taking the bad end of Precious and Metal there. Precious and Metal just punishing her in the back of the track. Precious and Metal apparently picking up the penalty on that hit. She's going to head out to the penalty box. Judy, Judy Jennison just going at it. Trixie's trashing him at the front of that pack. And another excellent hammer and nail run by the Jet City Blockers. Trixie trashing him just continuing to pound on Judy Jettison. And see, wouldn't want to be also in there with a the little one-two punch. Well, it looks like we've got Sia wouldn't want to be a... Check. Uh, we've got a sacred 
City player on the floor is uh, number 22, Slapjack, taking a fall, getting it back up. Not sure exactly what she was grabbing, because when she was on the floor, she was grabbing her shoulder, and now she's kind of on the hips there. I don't, I don't know, probably just a hard fall, maybe knock the breath out of her. We should be seeing her again, Mike Checks. 18 minutes remaining in the game, 113-84. Sacred City on top, but Jet City certainly rallying here in the second half. Stack size returns to the jam line for Jet City, number 44 and four. Closer taking the jammer cap for Sacred City. Both teams starting this jam with one blocker in the penalty box. Before we get this action underway, we are in an official timeout. That's correct. It looks like we just corrected the scoreboard to reveal. And Jet City actually picked up an additional three points in that jam. So the score now is 113.87. You are correct, MCOM. That's exactly what they were checking out as well, making sure that all of the points got tallied at the end of that jam since it was called off due to the injury. Huge hits coming off the line for closer, knocking snack size to the infield by virtue of just trying to break through that wall at the bottom of the pack, Mike. Well, then, Tom, what we've seen on display is excellent lateral movement by these jammers, and they need it the way the pack is playing right now. Snack size originally being sent to the penalty box for a cut, but now being waved back onto the track. She is back on the track, and she is your lead jammer. part pretty quickly here. The action just drilling up number one, Neil and Weep, Sacred City, not snacks like the outfield, forcing the call off as Forecloser catches up to the pack. Forecloser again lobbying for those two points. She, she passed the jammer at the very end of that jam, or so she thought. She's lobbying for those two points. I don't think she's going to get them. Well, I do know what I think and know. Adam Wheels are the official wheel of the WF. TDA and one of the proud sponsors of our entire our entire tournament season. We've got Sierra Fist lined up on the jam line for Jet City number 209. Jam and Jewels with the jam jammer cap for Sacred City. Both jammers are fighting their way through the pack. Sierra Fist breaking free through the middle. They just watch it go by. Lead jammer, Jet City. Jam and Jules clear the pack on her initial pass. Jet City, with, and Jet City with four blockers out on the track. Three for Sacred City. Sierra Fist working away halfway through the pack and calling off the jam from the outfield before Jam and Jules has a chance to engage the pack. No points scored, but good, fast thinking on her part. The huge hit knocking into the outside of turn one. You saw that on your screen there, and she still had the wherewithal to call that jam off. Judy Jennison stepping to the line in red, number 2010 for Sacred City. She will be up against number 44, Precious and Metal in white. And fans, OHSU is the official sports medicine providers of the Bridgetown Brawl. That's OHSU. On the no-pack call, working at two Precious and Metal's advantage, she darts to the pack, a lead jammer, Jet City Bombers. Jet City trying to seize momentum here. Four wall of Jet City blockers at the front of the pack. We got Judy Jettison fighting her way to the top of the pack as Sacred City hangs back looking to catch their goat at the back of the pack at number 12 for Jet City. Nasty Knight, Nikki Nightstick, pressures in metal, pulling out in front, picks up four points, calls off the jam. Interesting time to call off the jam. She was clear of the pack, had a scoring pass already, and Judy Jettison was just didn't still working her way through the pack. Maybe you're looking for a little silver sparkle in your life. A Rebel Jeweler located here in downtown Portland. Unique silver jewelry. They are giving a discount to folks who are telling them you're with the Derby. Perhaps when you are coming to Portland, which is a great place to wander around, you can also come in and uh, look at their 
their beautiful jewelry over at Rebel Jewelers. They do some amazing belt buckles if you're able to make it down. We've got a team timeout being called by Sacred City right now. Great time for a team timeout. Jet City on a roll right now. Sacred City at 113, Jet City at 92. So now we've got only 21 points separating these two teams, and we are just slightly more than halfway through the second half of play, MCOM. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is why Derby is the best sport ever, because you can have almost a double score at halftime, and you can't be comfortable with that. Exactly. It is, it is one of those sports where when they say it's anybody's game, it very much could be anybody's game. Sacred City letting their rallying cry go, sending four closer to the line with the star in her helmet for them. She's up against Snack Size. Got some Sacred City fans looking to do the rallying cry out in, out in the stands there. Sacred City fans, very boisterous. They've got their signs over there on the second straightaway. We've got the blockers and jammers lined up for action. Jet City going to start with a 4-3 to three blocker advantage over Sacred City. However, that's number 45, Colt 45, standing in the penalty box waiting to be released. We'll go ahead and review because, because we've had that timeout. Snack size there, number 21. <laughs> Looks like we're going to get an official timeout. I'll refresh you on your memory of the jammers here when we get back from that official timeout. Dr. Hauschka is celebrating the fresh faces of the WFTDA. Stop by their booth or online and get your fresh face. Many people are familiar with Dr. Hauschka's Outshade, but Dr. Hauschka also provides a fine line of many skin products on their website. Well, now we've got number 44, four closer, as we mentioned earlier, jamming for Sacred City, number 21 snack size, jamming for Jet City, and a a rumble going on just past the pivot line. Apparently Mike checks that official timeout, was checking the paperwork to make sure that the Sacred City player who went down earlier had sat out her appropriate number of jams. Out of the pack, neck and neck for closer first, but snack size second and lead jammer. She's, of course, not going to waste her time and call off the jam. Excellent defensive jamming there by four. Closer out of the pack first, but not lead jammer. That's right. I believe that was Slap Shack that we sent out on that uh, injury. They were just making sure that she sat out her three jams before she could re-enter, and they had to double check that that was indeed the case. Many, many, many things to keep track of. I'm keeping track of that Pabst Blue Ribbon uh, jammer line. That's Jammin' Jewels in for the ladies in red. She's up against Sierra Fist. And it looks like Sia wouldn't want to be. It picked up her fourth minor penalty at the end of that jam. She is going to go sit in the penalty box. As it seems may be the case for Precious and Metal as well. Our official announcer getting a workout during this bout, running back and forth. And we just got confirmation that that is, in fact, the case. See, you wouldn't want to be it. And Precious and Metal both picking up their fourth minor penalties at the end of that last jam. So what looked like we were going to start as a pack advantage with Jet City now is a pack advantage for Sacred City, 3-2. to two. That's right. The Sacred City fans are pounding their hands on the wall, cheering on their team. Sierra Fist having it to restart, recycle back to the back of the pack. Jam and Jules out in front, uh, lead jammer, Sacred City. Teeny Bopper followed her all the way out to the front. Couldn't hold her back there. Sierra Fist trying to make her way through the pack on her initial pass. Picks up a back block penalty, and she is headed to the penalty box for Jet City. Sacred City looking to give a little rebel yell and cut around the outside of the pack, looking for this power jam situation. Five points, she calls off the jam. Using a, a sacrificer strategy, it appears, that when you find yourself in a power jam while you're already skating, it appears that they just go ahead and call off the jam and go ahead and set a new set of legs onto that jam line. Well, and it is an interesting strategy, and I can definitely see both sides of it. If you are in the midst of your own power jam and you control the jam, you've already got your skaters on the floor, you've already made that initial pass, and you're already scoring points. Maybe you just keep going. But I also understand the getting a fresh set of legs out there, resetting, doing exactly what we see the Sacred City blockers doing, and that's taking a knee to get the jam started quickly in an attempt to get their jammer through quickly. 
Not only will they be taking a knee, but look, we've got a 3-2 advantage right now. Jet City Bombers have a full-up penalty box. All right, and it appears as though that white 4-0 teeny bopper for Jet City is sitting currently on four minor penalties. That means that as soon as a spot opens up in the penalty box, she will need to take that spot. It's a dangerous moment though. We've got both people sitting in the penalty box. So we, we know that we at least don't have that 10 seconds remaining there. That means a lot of time for her to pick up a potential major penalty and maybe end up with a two minute sit. And now it appears as though, scenario. right. And now it appears as though number 22 slapjack for Sacred City had picked up her fourth minor, and she's headed to the penalty box. Five seconds being counted on the clock for closer. Again, skating this power jam for Sacred City. We got a micro pack situation. She's trying to dart around the outside. Marilyn Gunho, though, and Trixie's trashing him, having to let her go. Lead jammer, Sacred City. Trixie's trashing him and Teeny Bopper now both headed to the penalty box. They have to check in, both of them picking up penalties. Precious and Metal and Sia wouldn't want to be here rejoining the action for Jet City. Wow, two in, two out. You don't see that too terribly often. <laughs> too terribly often. A five point grand slam put up on the board, four for closer and the Sacred City Sacrificers. Cash money now headed to the penalty box for Sacred City. Foreclosure dodging and weaving up against Precious and Metal. A little battle of the one on one as Neelan and Weep since Sia wouldn't want to be it to the infield. And that's a grand slam for Foreclosure in Sacred City. Sierra Fist with a huge bump into number one, Neil and Weep. She's back in from the penalty box, ready to score points for close of those, staring down two more blockers. All she needs is one of their hips, though, to get the points from those ghost points in the penalty box. Slingshot landed herself in the penalty box for Sacred City as well. 11 minutes remaining in the half. Sacred City on top, 128 to Jet City's 92. The uh, sponsor, or the, uh, the charity that we're working with this weekend is Big Brothers and Big Sisters. They're helping children reach their potential. Derby Nation, there is no better way to grow our fan base and our junior derby leagues than to go out and mentor someone today with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Number 40, Teeny Bopper rejoining the action for Jet City, as does number 69, Trixie's trash. And Jet City now with a four to two blocker advantage. Colt 45 wearing the jam cap for Sacred City. And it's Snack Size with the star for Jet City. Snack Size coming up on Neil and Weep. She passes her and she picks up lead. Jammer status for Jet City. Colt 45 uh, fighting her way there at the top of your screen against that wall of white at the top of the pack. Excellent footwork on display by Colt 45 as she makes it around the last of the Jet City blockers. She is clear of the pack. Get a little waitress slingshot out of the pack for Snack Size. She picks up four points, calls off the jam just before Colt 45 is ready to hit the pack on a scoring pass. Well, Fan Sock Dreams offers unique, sexy, comfy socks for the roller girl and everyone. That is Sock Dreams. You can check out their brick and mortar stores here in Portland, Oregon, or you can check them out online at SockDreams.com. Before you make fun of me, yes, I totally know that, by the way. <laughs> but, but do they have trim on them? I don't know if they have pink trim. Precious and Metal number 44 for Jet City on the line up against Jam and Jewels number 209 for Sacred City. Sacred City keeping three blockers in the back. Jet City with their four blocker wall at the front of the pack. Precious and Metal fighting through. She picks up lead jammer status for Jet City. Jam and Jules though just darts out of the top of the pack, just out the front door, putting the pressure on Precious and Metal. And she calls the jam. Jam and Jules celebrating over by her bench. So excited she was able to put on the speed to go ahead and force that call off. 
Sacred City fans voicing their approval. Sacred City hanging on to a 128 to 96 lead as we are just under nine minutes to play here in the second half. Pack advantage going to Jet City to start this jam. Precious and Metal jamming for Jet City. Judy Jettison jamming for Sacred. Precious and Metal making her way through to the middle of the pack, looking for that outside track, and she gets it. Lead jammer. Judy Jettison fighting her way through the back of the pack. She's going to come up upon Marilyn Gung Ho and Nasty Nikki Nightstick at the front. However, she skates by them both. She's clear on her initial pass for Sacred City. Precious and Metal dodging and weaving. Picks up her four points before Judy Jettison has a chance to re-engage the back of the pack. Jet City now hitting the century mark. 28 points separating these teams. Just under eight minutes left to play. MCOM, this is amazing. It is a fast, close, hard-hitting game. Sometimes you hear us going silent. It's because we're like, we don't know what to say. So many people hitting everybody in the pack. So many things going on. Frenetic action out on the track. Snack size lined up wearing the jam cap for Jet City. Number 44 for closer jamming once again for Sacred City. Sacred City with a wall of two at the back of the pack, hoping to contain snack size long enough to get Foreclosure through. Foreclosure beating up that wall at the top of the pack. Lead jammer, Sacred City. Snack size clear of the pack now for Jet City. She's given up about a half track though to Foreclosure. Foreclosure already zeroing in on that pack. Four wall being set up in front by Jet City. Foreclosure decides to call it off. Ref fists in the air for solidarity, no score. Well, you can certainly score some great items from rollergirlskates.com. Trigger Mortis is here in Portland with us. And of course, you can shop at home. Just open another browser window while you're watching this action. We've got Precious and Metal returning to the jam line for Jet City. She'll be taking on again number 209, Jam and Jewels. Jet City with four blockers at the front of the pack on a knee to get that jam started. They have a four to three pack advantage against Sacred City. Jam and Jewel sees a hole open up, has a hard time accelerating. Precious and Metal through the pack first, but knocked to the outside of the far straightaway. She gets called Lee Jammer, but Jam and Jewels breaking free from the pack as she, and, and Precious and Metal decides not to fight it free from the pack that she was reabsorbed into and calls off the jam. Fans, you are witnessing an amazing chess match between these two teams right now. Again, separated by only 28 points as we have less than six minutes to play. The back and forth of the momentum has been absolutely amazing. Sierra Fist going to try and seize that momentum for Jet City as she returns to the jam line against number 23, Axel Breaker, for Sacred City. Sacred City hasn't fielded Axel Breaker as a jammer in this game. Huge pileup just at the pivot line. Number 16, Slingshot returning to action from the penalty box for Sacred City. We're 15 seconds in and we haven't made it out of turn two. Correct, Sierra Fisk getting a knock to the outfield. Axel Breaker just breaking through that Jet City wall. She's out, not Lee Jammer though, and no pass, no penalty. Sierra Fist of fighting her way up to the top of the pack though. She's coming up against number 22, Slapjack. Keeping her in her place. Cash Money tried to draw a track cut on Sierra Fist there. Does not appear as though it was successful. However, Axel Breaker threw the pack on a grand slam for Sacred City. Apparently Sacred City throwing in Axel Breaker as a good blocker and jammer to go ahead and lengthen out that lead and not make the score as tight. And a humongous hit by Axel Breaker on Sierra Fist coming out of turn four, dropping Sierra Fist. Amazing display of action there by number 23, Axel Breaker for Sacred City. Sacred City fans just showering their approval. They have multiple sets of signs that they're putting up for those of you that are watching at home. It's like they've got a rotation of signs just like we have a rotation of players out on the track. Or like earlier when we had a rotation of jammers in and out of the penalty box. Indeed, it's the battle of the fours. Precious and Metal, white 44 up against foreclosure. Number 44 for Sacred City. Nemcom, this has been one of my favorite jammer battles all day long. This time though, Precious and Metal being held up by a four wall of Sacred City blockers in the back. Four closer making her way through that pack on the second.
turn. She is your lead jammer. Precious and Metal, though, out of the pack quickly coming around. She's about half a track behind. A foreclosure probably looking for the fast points and the call off. Marilyn Gun Ho headed to the penalty box for Jet City. And no point scored in that pass. 138, 100, three minutes remaining in the game. Snack size returning to the jam line for Jet City. Colt 45 putting on the cap and approaching the Pabst Blue Ribbon jam line for Sacred City. Jet City's blockers taking a knee to create that no pack situation immediately. The jammers are released. Wall of red in the back does allow Colt 45 through, but then she has to contain, she gets contained by that wall of white at the top of the pack, Mike. Well, you can see all of those blockers coming up the track in turn two. We've got a heck of a fight going on out there. Snack size trying to work her way through. Excellent positional blocking by Sacred City. Snack size up fighting against those last two Sacred City blockers does break free Lee Jammer, but Colt 45 also clearing the pack and ready to score. Sacred City cycling their four blockers up to the front, gonna try and make life hard for Snack Size. Snack Size able to pick off one point and calls off the jam. She had given herself about a half track lead on Colt 45 there and she used every step of it. Jam and Jewels up on the line against Precious and Metal. Looks like we've, we've got a team timeout being called by Jet City. I would swear to you, Mike Checks, there are not eight blockers on that track, the way they're bouncing back and forth. They take up a lot of room and a lot of space. Both of these teams playing heavy defense on the track today. Well, indeed, and that is reflected in our score. 138, Sacred City, Jet City, 101. Two minutes, 12 seconds left to play. And folks, if you are just tuning in, Jet City wearing their white uniforms with blue numbers and trim. Sacred City wearing their mar maroon uniforms with pink numbers and trim you're such the fashionista mike checks what can i say hey there's an axle breaker sign being displayed by one of the fans up in the crowd you are right sacred city does have a number of different signs they seem to be rotating through yeah it's you know keep it fresh keep the variety you really need to have a deep sign bench <laughs> if you are going to cheer at a tournament because you can't have the same three signs all tournament that's excellent. Did I just provide commentary on signage? I do believe so. So I, I, I have a tendency to give uh, give prizes out to my fans at home who who bring creative signs to my bouts. That's why, because I love signs. That's amazing. Resetting the action on the track. We have four blockers in play for Sacred City. Only two blockers being fielded on the track by Jet City as they have two blockers in the penalty box. One of those, number 62, Marilyn Gun Ho. She wearing the pivot cap and she also... Ah, apparently Sacred City will not be fielding four blockers to start this jam. Spiller being sent to the penalty box for having picked up her fourth minor at the end of that last jam. Sacred City taking the knee to create that no-pack situation. Jammers released. Precious and Metal just heading like a magnet toward Neil and Weep, and Neil and Weep stopping her. She is forced to dodge around the other direction, buys enough time. Jam and Jewels, the lead jammer. Nasty Nikki Nightstick providing the last line of defense for Jet City, trying to hold back Jam and Jewels, but that is a tough road to hoe. Jam and Jewels making quick work of the pack, already coming up against the back of Nasty Nikki Nightstick once again. Neil and Weep sent to the penalty box right now. Sacred City down two blockers. Two points picked up by Jam and Jewels before she's forced to call off the jam. 39 points separating these two teams as we have a minute and a half left on the period clock. Foreclosure on the line in red up against Snack Size in white. Looks like we've got three blockers out there for Jet City, two blockers for Sacred City. Jet City wanting to get this jam started right away. They need every second to see if they can rally off 39 points to tie Sacred City. 
Snack Size uh, fighting her way through the pack and on the outside becomes lead jammer. This might be the rally that Jet's wanting. Out of play, Major being called on Marilyn Gun Ho. She is headed to the penalty box. Nasty Nikki Nightstick and Bielzo Babe, the two blockers out there on the track for Jet City. Trixie Trashenham uh, joining Bielzo Babe in the box. Snack Size calling off the jam, picking up her four points. 25 seconds remaining on the, the game clock. That was Jet City's last timeout. 35 points separating these two teams. And it looks like Trixie's trashing them may be headed back to the locker room area for Jet City. That's correct. Apparently she did pick up her seventh seat in the penalty box. A like player, a blocker, will go ahead and sit in the penalty box for her. Again, that's just a place-holding item. It, it, is not, it does not count negatively toward her. We're going to have one last jam in this game. Foreclosure up against Precious and Metal. That's a lot of 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four action on the track. Indeed. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favorite jammer matchups. And MCOM, it looks like we may, please understand we may, Start this jam with a pack light situation. Two blockers on the track for each team. That would be Teeny Bopper and Nasty Nikki Nightstick doing the blocking for Jet City. And that would be Slapjack and Axle Breakers, number 22 and 23, respectively, for Sacred City. And apparently, Sia wouldn't want to be a is serving the penalty picked up for that seventh trip to the box. I'm thinking what the teams are doing for us is showing us a little before and after. Before, when we start the game, we have four on four, and after, we've got two on two. And here we go, there's your heartbreaker and your tie up right there. Precious and Metal headed to the penalty box. Foreclosure made lead jammer, 10 seconds left on the clock. We'll see how long Foreclosure decides to race it out. Foreclosure checking in with the period clock, getting the crowd to show their support. Time has run out, she's waiting. Checking in with her bench, skating backwards, not to engage. She is the lead jammer, she can call this off at any time. She's appearing, we weaving and dodging, period clock out. She finally goes ahead and calls the jam. Calling off the game as well. We've got an unofficial final right now of 140-105. What Sacred we City congratulating themselves. Indeed, congratulations to Sacred City. They will leave this tournament in the seven spot. Winners of the seventh place bout here on Sunday in Portland, Oregon at the 2011 WFTDA West Region Tournament.